Hi there Buick owners, today in your 2020 Buick Envision we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Roadmaster's crossbar style base plate. All right, so here we are behind our motorhome. We've got our base plate fully installed here. At this point, we just need to make our connections to our motorhome. This is the crossbar style one here that we're using today. Uh, we've got it all set up here and it's ready to hook up to any Roadmaster uh, tow bar. Our tow bar is designed to be the connection point for connecting our vehicle to our motorhome. To connect it, we're just gonna drop our tow bar down. We can see that the ends here slide in between our crossbar. We can then take the pins and we're gonna slide those through our tow bar and then take the small latch pin on the other side and ensure that our pin stays in place. Make sure you get that all the way locked down. All right, so that's kind of the main purpose of our base plate here is to give us that connection point. But there are a couple of other things that Roadmaster has thought about because they know, hey, beyond just hooking up your tow bar here, there's usually other things that's required for a flat tow. And they started incorporating mounting locations for that into their tow bars, and it's fantastic. If we look down here, we've got a mounting location for our electrical connector. So we're also gonna go ahead and plug that in as well. We've got a six way installed on here and these bars that come out of our base plate give us that mounting location. And that's great because a lot of times you're having to modify the vehicle in some way to get this connector mounted up. This way we, it provides us with that. We don't have to cut any weird holes here or add additional weird brackets to the front of our vehicle to uh, get that set up. It also provides your mounting location for your breakaway switch, which is over here. And that's also very nice, again, for the same reasons. We don't have to make our own bracketry. We don't have to modify or cut the vehicle in uh, excessive ways because they've given us a, a point there that makes it easy. It also sucks or tucks it in very nicely under the vehicle. If you don't have a mounting location like that on your base plate, oftentimes you're mounting it somewhere to the vehicle out here. And breakaway switches are fairly long, so they usually stick out fairly far. Uh, so it's cool that it's got that integrated into it like that. It makes it much cleaner and uh, it just feels more secure this way. And lastly, we need to connect our safety cables. On our base plate, we've got attachment points sticking out right here and there's one just like that over on the other side. You've got a moderate size opening on there that should work with these big cables here. We can see that it clips in there with no problem. We'll then stretch this out and connect it to the back of our motorhome. We want to attach this to the opposite side on the motorhome. And then we're gonna connect our other cable doing the same thing when we cross it. This will create a cradle. So in the event of a catastrophic disconnect, it'll keep our components from digging down into the pavement. We'll begin our installation here at the front of the vehicle with the hood open. We're gonna remove the panel that runs across the top here. You can see there are several fasteners that we'll have to remove all those push pins. So to remove these, the way we'll do it is we're gonna take either a flat bladed screwdriver or a trim panel tool, either work fine. And we're gonna go in a little slit. If we look at the, let's see if we can find one. This one here's got a nice visible slit on it right there. You can see one spot, there'll be an opening for you to stick a flat bladed screwdriver or a trim panel tool piece in. So we're just gonna take our device here, put it right inside of there, kind of give it a little bit of a twist. I like to start with the screwdriver, but it's a lot easier after you get a little gap there. Switch over to your trim panel tool. And that's how I'm gonna remove each one of these. I prefer to do it this way. The trim panel tool, the problem with using that to begin with, the slit's a little small and these blades are a little bit wide to fit in there. So usually it works best to kind of do it with this little combination of the two. Now that we've removed the last pin, this piece is just gonna lift off of there. We're gonna set this aside where it won't get damaged. And then we're gonna grab our torque socket here. We're gonna use a 15 T15 to remove these. You can see we got one, two, three, four. That's attaching our grill here to the front. And then just to the outside of that, we also have a, another one here. So that's a total of six going across the front that we're gonna be removing here. All right, so now that we've got all these removed here, we can see that the top here is loose. You can kind of even lift up on this a little bit, pull it off of those little pins. And that's it. We just wanted to get this top part loose here. We're now underneath the vehicle here at the front. We can see we've got a bunch of screws growing across the front we got to remove as well as some here in the middle. And there's a push pin right here as well. 
We can go ahead and remove the push pin first. We're gonna use our trim panel tool to get underneath of it and just pry it out of there. So it's in there pretty tight. As you can see there. There we go. So we got that pried out. Now we're gonna go ahead and swap to a seven millimeter socket to remove the remaining fasteners. So we'll get these three in the middle here. There's about eight that run across the front here. And then on each side, we've got some right by the tire here that we also need to remove. There's five of them here. All right, and we'll head over to the other side and remove those same fasteners over there. That was a total of five that we took out. With all those fasteners removed, we should be able to just kind of pull down and towards the rear of the vehicle to remove it. We'll just set this aside. All right, so now we're on the wheel well. We're over on the passenger side. I did turn the wheel to the left, so that way the wheel kind of got out of our way and it revealed these four screws that are right here on the inside. We're gonna use our T15 Torx that we had from earlier to remove these. Once we've got the fasteners removed, we can kind of peel our fender liner out of here. There we go, just like that. And we can see right here on top, we've got a screw right there, a bolt that we're gonna use a seven millimeter socket or wrench to remove. And we're just gonna go up in here. And we're just gonna remove that bolt. Once we've got the bolt removed, next we're gonna grab our trim panel tool because we need to pop this trim piece off at least up to this seam here because this piece is coming off. This will stay, but that's going. So we're gonna reach behind here and we're just gonna be pulling outward on this. Oh, just like that. We have a trim panel tool here in case we need one, but that popped right out of there. A lot of times what'll happen if you get, get to pop out so far in the next clip, um, I'll take my trim panel tool there and we'll just hit each clip working our way up until we get it removed. So we're gonna go ahead and pull out one more up here. And this will be plenty for us to get this removed. I like to go past uh, the first one here, um, get these two, just so that way this bends out far enough. So now I'm just gonna grab a napkin here and I'm gonna fold out. These are just shop towels we've got here. You can use a rag at home for this. We're just looking for something that we can kind of just get a nice soft pad that we can then slide up in place here about right there. And that just kind of holds it out for us so that way we can uh, get this pe these pieces removed. All right, now that we've got this piece uh, popped out here, we can start removing part of our fascia on this side. We're just gonna pop it out just about that point there. Once we get up here to our headlight, uh, that's probably a good point to just kind of hold off. We're gonna go over to the other side now and we're gonna repeat these same procedures over on that side, kind of getting it popped out and getting all this set up. All right, so now that we've done that on both sides, we've got it prepped. I do recommend that you grab yourself an extra set of hands at this point, just because this is a very long piece. It can be difficult to remove by yourself. I'm gonna show you how to take it off by yourself, but if you have that option for an extra set of hands, it's gonna make your life a whole lot easier. So if you're doing this by yourself, you'll wanna start on one side, and if you got an extra set of hands, each of you will be doing this at the same time. We're gonna start on one side, and we're gonna get this popped out, working our way forward. All right, once we get it to about this point here in the center, I'm gonna push this back on, on each side. And since I'm doing this by myself, I'm actually gonna grab a couple of those bolts and we're just gonna pop them right down there on the top, just a couple of turns, just to hold this piece in place for me. So that way it doesn't accidentally fall. It's got little clips there, you see little kind of hooks, but uh, just a couple of turns on the fastener will ensure that it can't go anywhere. All right, so that's good enough there. We're gonna get this side popped out the same now. So I'm coming over here. There we go. Got it popped out the same. So now we can come right back to the middle, pull those two fasteners out. Those were just there for just a quick temporary minute. So that way this thing couldn't move on us. And now we're gonna release these clips on top. These, just like we did before in the very beginning when we uh, pulled them off, we had just temporarily kind of sat them back in place there to hold our fascia since we're doing this all by ourselves. All right, 
So there we go. We've got all that loose. We're then just going to slowly walk it away from the vehicle, checking for any electrical connectors that we may have. And we do have one over here on the passenger side. To disconnect the connector, we're going to push back on the red locking tab, press in on the release tab there, and then disconnect it. A lot of times when you're doing this, you end up pulling it off the side of the vehicle. No big deal. Yeah, just like that. That's not a big deal. These clips are just getting real stuck. All right, so it's kind of fighting me a little. I can put my knee under it and rest it against the vehicle to get another hand in there. Because for whatever reason, these clips are always difficult to separate. <clears throat> And then just gently walking it away. And now we'll set it aside where it won't get damaged. Next, we're gonna remove our adaptive cruise control sensor, which would be mounted here. We're gonna remove the entire bracketry. Our vehicle doesn't have one, uh, but the bracket still has to come off. There's two bolts at the top of our bracket here, and there's one right down here at the bottom as well. We'll use our seven millimeter to remove these. That'll just slide up out of there and we can set that aside. Next, we're gonna remove the air dam here. This is held in place by four push pins across the top, one on each side and two on the bottom. We're just gonna use our trim panel tool to remove these. The ones on the side are similar to the ones that we had removed previously that have the center tab that pops out and then we can pop the whole thing out of there. Very similar to, uh, to the other ones that we had. Be careful when working around here too with your tool. You don't want to slide through any hole and poke anything. And the rest of these um, are just regular push pins. What I like to do to get these out is I actually go behind the plastic of the entire component and just pop it out like that. It seems to get a little better, better surface area. It just seems to work better. So we're gonna do the same thing. And then we got two on the bottom as well. And it's same same story with these. I like to go behind the whole plastic piece to pry them out of there. Just seems to work a little bit better that way. All right, we're not going to be reinstalling this. We're actually going to be cutting some more of it off. Uh, the entire piece here. We're going to grab our uh, reciprocating blade or a cutoff wheel, and we're going to be cutting these trim now on each side, flush with the bottom of this beam. So I'm going to go grab my cutting tool here so we can get that done. Now that we've got that off of there, the only thing that's holding it on is just some rubber pieces here at the bottom. You can just kind of pop it out of those. And then we have a sensor that's still connected to the bottom of this as well. We're going to pull that out of there while we're doing this. So we're just working these little rubber pieces off here. We've got one more and then that's that sensor. To remove our sensor, we can look here. You can see it's got just some tabs you push in and then it pops out of there. So we're just pushing in on the tabs and then popping that out of there. The sensor that we removed here, we're just gonna fold that back over and poke it right into the hole that our piece here that we had just removed used to attach to. And that'll hold that in place right there for us. Now we'll grab our seven millimeter socket once again and we're gonna remove the arms on each side. There's two here and one there. And this whole piece we're gonna take off here in the middle. This piece we are going to be reinstalling, so that's why we had cut off this stuff. No reinstall, this is. When you remove the bolts here for your uh, centerpiece, that also right there was for your horn. So just you just grab that and just set it off to the side. Just You don't want to let it hang from the wire if you can prevent that. And we're going to go over to the other side. Same thing over here, horns in the same location. It is still attached just on top here. To remove these, we're just going to push that in and that'll let us use a screwdriver or something to just pull the rubber up out of the way. Hook underneath this one, push it in a little bit and then I should be able to pull this up. There we go. Got that released off of each of those. And then we'll pull our whole assembly up. Now you may or may not have an electrical connector here. If you have the louvered um, 
mechanism here, then you have a motor there we'll need to disconnect. After you push the red lock tab out of the way, we can then press in on the release and disconnect it. And again, we're gonna set this aside. We are gonna be reinstalling that later. So now we're gonna remove the harness here from our bumper beam here in the middle. This, this cross beam portion is gonna be removed. Uh, so we need to get all these wiring clips off of here. We're gonna use our trim panel tool to assist us with that, just prying these out of there. So we want to also remove uh, these plastic end caps. So we pried that out of there. We also wanna pry the uh, push pin here out as well. And then we can remove our end cap here. There's one on the other side we're gonna remove the same way. And we're just gonna work our way down here releasing these. With these ones here, like, you can actually remove these by put, just pushing in on these tabs. Just kind of pull back on them a little bit. Next, we're gonna remove our bumper beam now. There's holes that are cut out here for you to have access to the bolts. We're gonna use a 13 millimeter socket to remove them. And they're really not on there that tight. I like to take this very first upper corner bolt and as I'm removing it there, I like to stop before it comes all the way out, about right there. And then we're gonna remove the rest of them now. The only reason I left that one there is because when I go over to the other side and I go to remove bolts over there, uh, if I don't have any bolts on this side, it could fall down and be a little awkward. So it just gives you a little bit more control. And for the last one here, I'm just supporting it in the center. I can zip out this bolt while holding it still in the middle. I can go over to the other bolt, get that one out of there, and then we can swing this away. Looks like we did miss a piece of wire attached to the back of it here. We can see right there. So we can grab our trim panel tool. Now on the side of the frame here, this is, this is the bolts that we just took out. So right here on the side, we're gonna remove these connectors here. Get our trim panel tool behind them and just pry them out of there. All right. So this is pretty much where we're gonna be drilling in right here in this area. And it's looking pretty crowded right there. So we're gonna try to see if we can clean this up because our, our um, base plate is gonna go right here and we actually drill holes in these flanges to, to attach it. So I'm gonna get some stuff out of the way. We're just gonna disconnect some of these connectors here just to free up some space, set our horn, our horn off to the side and just disconnect these so we can get as much room as possible in here. Making sure we don't damage anything when we go to drill our uh, holes for our base plate. All right, so this next step, I highly recommend an extra set of hands. We've grabbed one here to help us. On the other side, somebody will hold it. We're gonna line up the top here with uh, the top of our, kind of our frame right here. And this is the base plate that we're installing. Make sure that you got the round edges and stuff, everything kind of hanging off the bottom of it. This is the orientation that's gonna fit on your vehicle. And we're lining up these four holes that are in the side here, two on top with this pinch weld here on top, because we're gonna have to drill through to clamp it onto there. And then two holes line up with the ones on bottom. We want the front here to be pretty much flush with uh, this like pinch weld sheet metal right there. And there's images in your instructions to assist you with that. After you, you're holding it up here, kind of get it lined up, and then we put a couple of clamps on it here. We got a clamp here, we got a clamp here, uh, just a couple of them there squeezing it. C-clamps work out really well. Um, also, if you got those at home, to squeeze this in place to hold it. And we did the same thing on the other side there, so that way it'll hold it on there for us so we can get this drilled out. We'll now grab a 3 8 drill bit so we can get these drilled out. And we got our 3 8 drill bit here. We're just lining it up with the hole that uh, is in our base plate and using that as a template to drill out our frame. We got one hole drilled. We're gonna go ahead and get a bolt in. I like to get one in on each side. That way, uh, if something were to happen, a clamp loosens up or whatever, we got it kind of a, a bolt on each side that's gonna make sure we can easily line this back up, make sure everything works out. 
So this is the slightly longer bolt that comes in your kit. You're gonna have eight of these in the kit. We're gonna put some red Loctite on it. All the bolts that come in our kit, we're gonna be using Loctite on. Anything that secures our base plate, we're gonna be putting that on there. After you got that on there, we're gonna have a washer that goes on the bolts. And then grab your spacer here. This spacer drops down and it fits in there between our base plate and our frame of the vehicle. Our bolt will slide through. We'll place a lock washer on the other side and then follow that up with a nut. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and snug this down uh, just so that way it kind of hold, holds everything in place so it can't move. All right, I got that one snug down there. So I'm gonna drill out the one on the other side, get my bolt started and snug down just like this. And then I'm gonna drill out the remaining three holes that's located on each side. These ones here can be just a little bit trickier getting your spacers installed going up through the bottom. There we go. You just don't have quite as much room to reach there, but you should still be able to get those installed. All right, so we went ahead and got all those drilled out. We put our hardware in each one. Um, we just got them mostly hand tight uh, for right now. Next, we're gonna remove these bolts that you see here. We're gonna do one side at a time and then zip this out. So we're just gonna focus on this side over here. Get all three of these removed. So now we'll grab our bracket here for the side. It is side specific. So we want uh, the side piece here that's got the angle. We want the flat part on top, the angle on bottom, slotted holes to face towards the outside of the vehicle. It should look like this. It'll slide right over your uh, existing um, bracket that's running across there for the radiator support. And then we'll take our uh, pieces here and we'll get them in place. And it looks to me like we're gonna have to, there we go. Should be able to get those in there. And we're not reinstalling the uh, factory bolts these are the smallest diameter bolts that come in your kit. Uh, you're only gonna, you're gonna get a total of six of these, three for each side. You don't get any nuts that match with them. Got your lock washer and your flat washer on there. And then of course we're putting our Loctite on there as well. After you get each one of those started, we can then get our other hardware started through the side here. So this is the same diameter as these bolts here that we use, but these are slightly shorter. We're gonna put a flat washer on it. We're gonna slide it from the outside in. And on the other side, this one's gonna get a flat washer followed by a lock washer. And finally, a nut. And once we get this installed over here on this side, we're gonna head over to the other side and get these loosely installed as well. We don't wanna tighten these down just yet, uh, just cause it can be difficult to get all these bolts to kind of line up. Uh, with everything, if you got everything all snug. So we'll get that mocked up. And then at that point, we'll just be snugging and tightening everything down. All right, so we've got this side all started, got all of our hardware and we can go back and run everything down now. We're gonna use our 13 millimeter for the uh, ones going straight in. And then these are the same size as these. So we'll switch back to our 15 for those. All right, now we'll just go back and torque our hardware to the specifications outlined in our instructions. All right, so now that we've got our base plate all the way torqued down, at this point, we're just gonna reinstall things in reverse order of how we removed them. We'll get our cross beam here back on, um, the bracketry that we took off here, our horns and all that stuff, just reverse order of how we took it off. The only thing that we are gonna have left to do that we really need to do differently is we do have to make a small modification to our fascia to allow our components to pass through properly. Um, but at this point, I highly recommend that you take a break from your base plate install. Because while we've got all these, our uh, fascia removed and stuff, there's a lot more room to work. And this is the perfect opportunity to complete the rest of the stuff that you've got in a flat toe setup, such as your supplemental braking system and your diode wiring. Well, you'll be able to much more easily route all those wires now. So I'm gonna go ahead and complete those things. And then we're gonna come back and get what you hear and we'll show you how to trim out that fascia and how to get that thing back on. I've gone ahead and marked out the areas where we need to cut. 
and we're just going to remove those bars there. We're just going to use a pair of snips to do this. There's a lot of different tools you could use. You could use a cutoff wheel, a reciprocating blade, um, but I find that the snips actually work pretty well on this. So we're just going to go right in where we made our marks and we're just going to cut these little sections out of here. Maybe we didn't cut all the way through on one of them. Oh, there we go. All right, so we got that out of there. We're now gonna move down to the sides. What we do on this side, we're also gonna do on the opposite side. So let's just get this cut out. All right, and then you might have a couple of rough edges there. After making your cuts, we're just gonna take a file here and just file those down to smooth that back out. <laughs> Okay, so we're getting ready to bring the fascia over so we can reinstall it, but I just wanted to quickly just touch base with you on the reinstallation of components. You know, don't forget to put your horns back on each side, make sure you get all that plugged in, your cross beam, your louvers here, don't forget that connector that plugs in the bottom there, uh, your support here for the middle, so get all those things on. The order that I would recommend putting these parts back on is do the cross beam first, snap all your wiring and stuff in, then you can put your louvers back on, plug that motor in, get your horns on, and then last you can do the center piece. So yeah, we got all that on, you put those plastic pieces back on and stuff. Um, yeah, now at this point, we're gonna go ahead and grab our, uh, our fascia and get this reinstalled. All right, so we're bringing our fascia over. Kind of getting it ready to go in position. Now you have an electrical connector that you need to reinstall, so don't forget that. That'll plug back in over here on the side. We got our connector here. You can even kind of reinstall that there. There we go, heard the click. We can lock it in. Now we're gonna line our fascia up here, checking each side, making sure we're going around our components. And we're gonna take a quick break here. Uh, we got it kind of lined up because this hole that we got here in the center that we cut is where we need to make sure we pass our, any wiring and stuff that we have to finish up here, get that passed through. And we're just being real careful, taking our time, going real slow, checking all of our spots all the way around, just kind of gently kind of pushing forward on it. Anytime we feel any kind of hiccup, or anything where it seems like it's caught up, we're gonna move to the other side and just check things out over there. All right, now that we've got it all lined up, we can just reinstall all of our fasteners in reverse order of how we removed them. And that completes our installation of Roadmaster's crossbar style base plate on our 2020 Buick Envision.